Hi guys, welcome back to my channel. So today we're making this Cookie Monster bag and cookie matching game. So the yarn I used for Cookie Monster himself is Loops and Threads Soft Classic and it's just called Blue. You're going to need some white, just a scrap size white and black for mouth and eyeballs. The any kind of brown, you can use any kind of brown. Um, this is just a four weight. I think the color is, I don't even want to say the color. I think it's dark taupe. I think that's the color and it's by Loops and Threads. And then all these little colors here, all these different little colors are all a Patton's Astra. So you can get any little colors you want. These are all three weight yarns. That's what past Patton's Astra is a three, three weight yarn. So that's what I used for the colors. And then just a chocolate brown for the little chocolate chips in the cookies. So let's jump right into this. So I'm using three different hooks for this project. So for the bag itself, I'm using a 6.5. For the eyeballs and the mouth, I'm using a five millimeter. And for the cookies, the entire cookies, I'm using a four millimeter hook. So first we're going to start with building the bag. So grab your 6.5 and your blue and meet me right back here. So I chose to do a pattern stitch for this. I don't know if there's a name for this pattern stitch. It's just something I chose to do. So I mean it could already be a stitch for all I know. But first you're going to chain 29. That's my chain 29. So it's a pretty loose chain. So I chose the bigger hook because you kind of want the bag to be flowy and not stiff. So in this first stitch, I want you to do two single crochets. So put a marker on this first stitch. And now I want you to do 26 single crochets. This is my 26th stitch and I have one stitch left and in that one stitch I want you to do four single crochets and I want you to follow the curve so it's going to curve around this way and I want you to follow it. So that's my four single crochets. I'm going to pull my slip knot closed again and now I'm going to work on the other side of the chain. So down the other side of the chain. So don't make sure you don't go back into your slip knot. Make sure you miss that part and go into the next stitch. I'm going to weave in my straggler at the back and I'm going to do 26 single crochets. So now we're just matching the other side. This is going to be the bottom of our bag. This is my 26th stitch. I have one stitch left right there and I'm going to put two single crochets in there because that's how we started so we're trying to just match the other side. And this is what you should have for your starter. So that'll be the bottom of the bag. So you should have 60 stitches. 
This next row is now going to be half doubles. So I want you to pull up on this a little bit. Yarn over and put a half double crochet in there. Put your marker on it. Count that as number one. You're going to do 60 half double crochets, which should take you around the entire bottom. So 60 crochets, or half doubles. This is number one with the marker. The stitch is elongated because it goes around in a circle. So just make sure you're getting into this next stitch and not the same stitch. So that's my 60 stitches. So we can flip this this way. So this will be the inside and this will be the outside. The nice side will be the outside. So we're going to start this pattern stitch that I wanted to do for this bag. So this bag, let me show you the back side, looks like this because of the pattern stitch we're going to do. And I just thought it was much better than just doing a regular old bag where you can see the lines and, you know, I thought it was just, it's nicer. It's much nicer looking. So it's pretty easy. You don't have to do it if you don't want to. So go into your next stitch with a single crochet. Put a marker on that. And then we're going to follow it up, same stitch, with a half double. That's it. That's your pattern stitch. You're going to skip one. You're going to skip one. And into this next stitch, you're going to put a single crochet and a half double. That's my phone. Vibrating. <laughs> Sorry. I thought I turned the volume off, but apparently I put it on vibrate. So skip one. And into this next stitch, you're going to do a single and a half double. So um, that is it for this round. Skip one, single, half double. Skip one, single, half double. So we're coming up on the end. I'm going to skip one, put my stitches in there, and then we don't do anything for here because it's a skip one. So this is what you should have so far. And that's our first round with our pattern stitch. So I'm going to call these clusters even though it's two stitches, I'm going to call them a cluster. Um, just for easier reference throughout the video, just so you know what I'm talking about. So you should have 30 clusters because we skipped one in between. We initially had 60 stitches. We skipped a stitch because we're putting two stitches in, that's why we skip one. Just so we don't increase. So because we're putting two stitches into the same space, we skip one to make up for that second stitch being in that space. That way we never increase. We stay exactly the same size we are right now. So you should have 30 clusters. We're going to do this for the next 13 rows, but what I want you to do is um, your next your next cluster isn't going to be on top of your other cluster. Your next cluster is going to be in between the clusters. So when we start again, that's a cluster. This is a cluster. You're going to go right in that hole in between the clusters to do 
your next round and your next round and your next round and your next round. So moving forward, so go in between to start your next cluster. So that's a cluster and that's a cluster. So we're gonna go right into that hole in between to do our next cluster. And that's how we're going to do it for the next 13 rows. So just remember you should have 30 clusters and you're working in between the clusters on every single row. For 13 rows total, which means we've already done one together, we're, we're on our second one starting. So if you're using a, a row counter, this row here that we're, we've started together is row two. But again, at the same time, you can make yours as big as you want to. So if you wanted to go past 13 rows, that's completely up to you. So that is my 13 rows. So we need to move this marker because it's going to be in the way of what we're doing. So let's just take it out. We're going to start to slip stitch and chain. Um, because when we come to the end of this, we, we don't want it to be offset like this. We want it to be even. So we've done this so far in amigurumi style where we didn't slip stitch and change. So we have no seams and it's all pretty. But now we're going to do um, our slip stitch and chain. We're not going to do it here because we're in a weird spot. We need to put handles in. So I'm going to move off to the side. So six clusters over and then I'm going to slip stitch and chain. So I just want you to do six more clusters. This is my sixth cluster. So I'm going to go into this next stitch. I'm going to slip stitch and I'm going to chain one. So starting in the same space, I'm going to continue six more clusters. So same space, single crochet, half double, starting with your, that's number one cluster. This is my sixth cluster. So this is where you should be. I'm going to chain eight. I'm going to skip three clusters. So this is number one, two, and three. So in this next stitch, I'm going to start my clusters again, single crochet, and a half double. So this is now going to be your handle. I know it's hard to see. So this should be somewhat even. You're going to have one, two, three, four, five clusters. One, two, three, four, five clusters. Takes you to the edges of your bag. 
So this should be right in the middle if you're doing everything correctly. So you're going to do 12 clusters and then we're going to do a handle on the other side. So this counts as number one. So that's my 12 clusters. So you should be directly on the other side of where you were in your other row. We're going to chain 8. You're going to skip 3 clusters. So these are your handles. And now you're just going to cluster back to where uh, we started, which should be six clusters. So that's my sixth cluster. Seven counting this that we reattached after our handle. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. And then you're going to slip stitch and chain one. So now that we've got our handles, when we come yeah. along for our next round, we're not getting into the stitches. We're just going to go right into the handle hole. <laughs> the handle hole. So um, for both sides with our with our stitches. So starting in this next space because this is a cluster. So this is our chain one space. We're not going to go into that because we have a cluster right there that we did. So we're going to go into the space next to it. We got five clusters to do. That's five clusters. We're at our handle. I want you to put eight half doubles into this handle. So right into the space. So that's eight for me. Now, if you don't get these even, they all slide. You can just slide them around. So now I want you to do 11 clusters. So this is my 11th cluster, right before my handle, where I'm going to do 8 half doubles into the handle. Send 6 clusters back to where we started. So that's my sixth cluster. I'm going to go in, I'm going to slip stitch, and I'm going to fasten off. So that is our bag with our handles. And I made them small for the little kitty hands, right? So, so fasten off. You just need to weave this tail in. So 
So before we get to the cookies and everything, let's get the face done for your bag. So you're going to need black and white. So I've got my white. You're going to need a 5 millimeter H hook for these eyeballs. And I want you to start with a magic ring of six single crochets. Your first round is going to be two single crochets in each stitch. And after your first stitch, that's where the marker goes. So two single crochets in each stitch gives you 12 stitches. So make sure your middle is <laughs> closed nice and tight. So your next round is going to be one single crochets and an increase. I am going to weave in my tail at the back. So that's your one single crochet. The next stitch will get your increase of two single crochets in the same space and repeat. You should have 18 stitches. For the next three rows, I just want you to put one single crochet in each of these 18 stitches. So that's my three rows. You can fasten off. With the sewing tail. So I'm going to put the pattern on the screen. You can go ahead and make your second piece and I'll meet you right back here. So I've got both mine done. Um, so I did the um, the pupils. I just crocheted those. So let's just set these aside for now, and we'll crochet the pupils. So grab your black. You're gonna do a magic ring. Still working with your five of six single crochets, and that's it. You're gonna fasten off. So super quick. So slip stitch and fasten off the sewing tail. As far as this guy at the back goes, just kind of pull, push, and I'm just going to tie a knot or two, really tiny. And then cut it off. And then this gets sewn to this. So one of them that I put right in the middle, and the other one I kind of offside because he's kind of googly eyed. <laughs> so that's what I did. So go ahead and make your other one as quick as it is. 
I'll still put the words on the screen. All right, so we sew. So I'm just going to come back here and grab a piece to make a knot with. I don't think it's necessary, but I don't want anything to really pop off. When it doesn't have to. And then the other one, like I said, you can do a offset to it if you wanted to. All right, <clears throat> so so I did sew a little, and then I like to do this when I do eyeballs and stuff. Just kind of roll it around in my hand because it's almost like it packs it. Well, it's not almost like it. It packs it so that it's easier to deal with. Alrighty, so that's how I'm going to be sewing mine on. You can sew these on any way you want to. And you can sew them wherever you want to. So before I I did a mattress stitch on this guy, but then that's what happens. You'll get this on the inside just from how you pull. So if you don't want that, then I wouldn't do a mattress stitch if I were you, but. So just make sure that you're leaving enough room for your mouth for this guy. So that's my eye sewn on. So I just weaved up into the eye. I did more, I weaved more than three times. So I made sure my one eyeball was kind of turned in for, you know, the whole cookie monster look. So uh, next we're going to do this mouth. So you're going to need just all black. So we're using a five millimeter still. First round, you're going to chain 21 and do 20 single crochets back up. So that's my 20th stitch, so I'm going to chain one, I'm going to turn. So 
So instead of decreasing the normal way, we're just going to decrease by skipping the first stitch of every row. So this first stitch, and I know it's so hard to see with black. So we're not going into that. You're going to skip it and go into the next one, and then you're going to do 19 single crochets. So this is my 19th stitch. I'm going to chain one and turn. And I'm going to skip the first stitch of this next row. So that stitch right there. Gosh, there we go. That stitch right there. You're going to skip that. And go into this stitch and do 18 single crochets. This is my 18th stitch. I'm going to chain one and turn my work. I'm going to skip the first stitch and I'm going to do 17 single crochets. That's my 17th stitch. I'm going to chain one and turn my work. Skip the first stitch and do 16 single crochets. So that's my 16th stitch. I'm going to chain one, turn my work, skip the first stitch and do 15 single crochets. As my 15th stitch, chain one, turn your work, skip the first stitch, and do 14 single crochets. As my 14th stitch, chain one, turn your work, skip the first stitch, and do 13 single crochets. Chain one, turn your work. We're going to change it up a little bit soon. Skip the first stitch, do 12 single crochets. Chain one, turn your work. Skip the first stitch and do 11 single crochets. So this is what you should have. It's hard to see because it's black, but you can see the decreases down the side. So uh, we are, let's come in a little bit here. We're going to do something different on this next row. So we're going to skip one, but then we're going to go into an SC2 tug, which is a decrease. Then we're going to do four single crochets. We're going to SC2 tug. <coughs> Excuse me. And then do one single crochet. You should have one stitch left. This is what we're going to start. We're going to do one single crochet around the entire project starting in this last stitch and moving forward. So one single crochet around the entire project. Now, when it comes to going down the side, you could put two per row. It should keep it straight. 
But whatever you do down this side, you got to match it on the other side. And then when you get down to your corners down here, I would put two in your corners just so you're able to make the corner without it rolling up. So just continue with your one single crochet around the entire project. And that'll be the end of the mouth. So this just cleans it up a little bit. So even though I have stitches along the top, I'm still going to move along the top because I put two stitches in there. And when we get back to the stitch we started in, that's where you're going to fasten off so it'll give the appearance of two stitches in there. Which will be this stitch right here. So I'm going to go in and I'm going to fasten off in that stitch. So you're going to need a sewing tail, but that's going to be your mouth. So that's the shape. Obviously the the small part goes on the bottom and the big part goes on the top. So we can get that sewn on. So I am all done. I'm not sure my mouth is like it needs to be. But you know, that's that's me. Me and my sewing. So I am just weaving in his mouth part. There. So you can't really tell you can't see any of the black through there you can see a little bit of the white well that's about it that's the inside so cookies tons of cookies that's what's next so I have cookie here as an example of what we're doing so this is the bottom part and it's gonna if you wanted for the matching game I mean, this is what we're making, is a matching game. So, you can use these for a counting game if you want. I just used them as chocolate chips. That's what the dark brown is for. It's not for counting. Um, this is just a matching game. So, you're going to need a variety of different colors. And, of course, I use the Patton's Astra for all my, my little colors. So, um, first... Let's make the top of the cookie and then we'll get to the bottom of the cookie and then we'll put it all together. So that's the plan. So get your brown, whatever brown you're using for your cookie. You're going to use a four millimeter hook for this. So this is a G hook. You're going to make a magic ring of 12 double crochets or a chain two and put 12 double crochets into the first chain. So I always chain one when I make my magic rings automatically. So I'm going to make sure I chain two and put 12 double crochets into this ring. The chain two, it does not act as a stitch. So that's my 12 double crochets. I'm going to pull my slip knot closed with 12 doubles. You should be able to get it all the way closed. 
So the reason I didn't use the chain two as a stitch is because that's where I want to slip stitch into and then chain two for the next round. So next round, you're going to do two double crochets in each stitch. So you're not starting here because we're not using this as a stitch. So into the first stitch available, you're going to do two double crochets and then two double crochets in each stitch all the way around, giving you 24 stitches. So that's my 24 stitches. I'm going to slip stitch to the top of this chain two. And I'm going to fasten off. You do not need a tail at all. So just whatever to weave in is all you need. So that's your cookie. That's your cookie top. And then this gets weaved in. This will all go up on this screen so you can just, you know, sit and watch TV and make your cookie bars. <laughs> There's a lot of cookies to make. Uh, it's pretty easy to remember too. Like I, I made it as easy as possible to remember. Two rounds of Well, I mean, not two rounds, one round. So, this is the part that gets the chocolate chips. Okay, so we need to grab some color. So we start with color for the matching part. We end with brown. So with your color, You're going to make a magic ring of 12 double crochets. So again, if you don't like the magic ring or don't want to do it, to chain two, put everything into the first stitch. Just make sure you chain two here. So 12 double crochets. Pull that closed. You're going to slip stitch and fasten off. Make sure you pull this magic ring tight. You can either do a knot or you can weave it in. I think in this instance I'm just going to weave it. So we're going to reattach with brown. So reattach any way you reattach. Doesn't really matter where you do it. I like to do it away from where I just fastened off. This is just like the last one that we just did where you're just putting two double crochets. The only reason we fastened off is because it's hard to do a it's hard to do a color change and it looked decent this way so it's just easier so chain two here that is going to count as a stitch in this instance and you're going to do two double crochets in each stitch so put a second stitch in there with that chain so two single crochets in each stitch all the way around giving you 24 stitches
Here we go. Now we're going to slip stitch to the top of this first chain. You can fasten off of this and then make all these pieces. I'm going to pull on this. Make all these pieces um, ahead of time. But ultimately you are going to be slip stitching them together. So there's no stuffing because there would be uh, way too much um, puff, if you know what I mean. So we're going to slip stitch these together, but we're going to use only the back loops. So the back loop of this cookie from this angle is just this right here. So that's the angle you're looking at here. And then the back loop, the back loop of uh, this. So go into the back loop and then into this back loop. Just like that. You're going to pull through and do a slip stitch. So back loop to back loop. And that's how we're going to bring the two ends together. The reason we use only the back loops, or the reason I chose to, for my design, is aesthetics. Really, that's it. It's the only reason is because what it looks like. So, if you want to do it any other different way, just to put these two pieces together, you can do it whatever you want. It's your project. But aesthetically, I thought it looked better. Gave it a little bit of depth. So I'm back around. I'm going to go into my final stitch. I'm going to slip stitch and fasten off. So you see how puffy it is? Um, just on its own with no stuffing. I'm not sure what happened with my blue part there, but the whole point of fastening off is to avoid that and oh, I just need to shove it down. I think it's just my knot popped up. Anyway, um, yeah, so you can just go in and weave wherever you want to. I chose to go in that way just to pull that down and make it look better. So that's how I put my cookies together. Like I said, you can do whatever you want. You don't have to do back loop to back loop. It's just aesthetically, I thought it looked better and it looked more like a cookie. So that's why I chose that route. And then once we're done that part, I take some dark brown and make our chocolate chips. And that's just simple sewing. Simple sewing, I might be able to do it. Anyway, once I'm done, I meet, meet up in the same place that I started. Um, it's, it's, depending on who this is going to, it's super important that you tie this together on the inside because if any one of these little pieces got pulled out, I mean, I know it's all one piece, you'd have to pull the whole thing out, but my worry is, you know, it going down a baby's throat or something and God forbid. So, I mean, I tied all my chocolate chips together and it's just sometimes you just have to take the time 
There, my cookie. So, um, you can make as many as you want for this game. Um, I'm going to make 12, I think, for my game. So I'm going to put all the pattern and everything, all of it, the whole thing, up on your screen. And uh, even though it's fairly easy to remember, I'm going to put it up on your screen. And uh, I'll meet you right back here when your cookies are done. So, I got all my cookies done. These blues are not the same color, but on camera they look like the same color. They are really close, but they're not, in case you're wondering. But I got all my colors done. So this is pink, even though it looks white, yellow, red, blue, a, diff a darker blue, and then green. So that's what I did. And then I got all my chocolate chips done. So, that is it. And now we just put them all inside the bag. There we go. All done. The Cookie Monster matching game. Thanks for joining me, guys. That was super fun. I will see you in the next video.